Hey, what's up, family? This is Keon here with Key Flavors, and I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Masters in the Making. Okay, so we're starting to wind down on this season of Masters in the Making. If you guys have made it this far, I appreciate y'all for sticking with it up to this point, right? And I hope by now you guys are in the kitchen already starting to make some of these things. If you guys like so far what you've been seeing, I hope that you're inspired enough to at least try to make some of this stuff. Okay, so up until this point, we've talked about the Amerindians, we've talked about the Indians, we've made food from the Chinese Guyanese. And for the last two episodes, we are talking about my people, the African Guyanese, the black people, the black banners them, if you will, of GT. Okay, so quick history lesson. In 1838, after slavery, there was an estimate of about 80,000 to 100,000 Africans living in Guyana. They were brought mainly from West Africa, and they made up ethnicities such as the Ashanti from Ghana, the Igbo and Yoruba from Southwest Nigeria, and the Mandingo from Senegal. And with them, they brought a deep and rich culture of religion, uh, love for one's neighbor, and of course, you best believe, they brought that flavor. Okay, so for this episode and next week's episode, I hope to share with you guys some of that traditional flavor and of course, we're in 2022, so you know I got to put a little bit of key flavors in there as well. Okay, so for today's dish, we're gonna be doing my take on cook-up. This is definitely gonna be a little bit away from tradition, but I believe with these flavors, you have a completely different dish, but still reminiscent of that flavor that we all know and love. Okay, so for today's dish, we're gonna need some fresh coconut because we're gonna make some coconut milk from this. We're gonna need our rice, some breadcrumbs, now, I know normally you just use, you know, kawaii peas, right? Or black eyed peas, some people have said. But I'm gonna use some chickpea or some chana. I'm gonna use some of the green seasoning. I'm gonna use some pepper sauce. We got some cook up seasoning. We're gonna use some onions, a little bit of brown sugar. And there's some other ingredients there too that you guys will see along the way. Okay, so first, we'll get a hammer, go around it. For this part, what we'll do is, I'll crack it a little bit more. And then the way you wanna get this out is you wanna get a knife, get in there, and kinda pry it out like that. So this is how you get the meat of the coconut. Okay, so to make coconut milk, there's a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a food processor or a blender of some sort. Water, the coconuts. We're gonna need a strainer and a bowl to strain everything into. We'll go in to the food processor with our coconuts. I'm gonna go out with some water. We'll cover this. So we're gonna take this out. at a time, all right, and just squeeze as much as you can out. So I made a bunch of extra coconut milk because we're gonna need this for the next episode. So of course a link will be in the description on exactly how to make this for this recipe. So let's turn the stove on. You're gonna go out with some vegetable oil, and then I'm gonna toast the rice. There's about two cups of rice. I'm gonna to toast it because I feel like the nutty flavor really brings out that flavor in the coconut. I'm 
gonna go out with some thyme from the garden, some green seasoning, some onions, four cloves of garlic, a mix of just a little bit of maggi, and of course the chief cook-up seasoning. I'm gonna go on with my chana, a little bit of brown sugar, and we'll cover this with our coconut milk. Then I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. We're gonna cover it and then let it steam all the way through. And final touch, I'm gonna go on with a little bit of all-purpose adobo. I'm gonna give the liquid a taste just to see if my flavor is correct. That's good. That's really good. All right, so now I'm gonna make a coconut sauce. Gonna go on with some green seasoning. And I wanna get a lot of the moisture out of that. Now I'm gonna go in with some coconut milk. Then I'm gonna go in using a microplane so that I get these garlics really nice and minced. Some ginger. All right, then we'll mix that. And now to thicken this sauce, I'm gonna go in with some cornstarch mixed with some coconut milk. Right, and then we'll bring that up to a boil and then that's gonna give us the consistency that we want. And last, I'm gonna go on with some salt and some pepper and let's mix that in. And let's give this a taste. Need some more salt. But the pepper is good. I'm gonna give this another taste. That's good. There's a little bit of grainy bits in there. So I'm gonna blend this up just to smooth it out. Okay, so fair warning, this is gonna be a vegetarian cookup. Every other episode so far in this series has had some sort of protein in it. And I wanted to show a little love to my non-meat eaters out there. My vegetable of choice is the balanche, or as known over here, uh, eggplant. All right, we got this from the garden. So first, I'm just gonna take this off so that I have a nice flat surface. Then I'm gonna cut this like so. And then I'm gonna use a spoon to scrape off all of the seeds. I'm gonna slice this like so. All right, so now we're gonna be deep frying these. I'm gonna go in first with some green seasoning, some adobo, some paprika, some garlic powder, salt, a little bit of some yuri pepper, and then some coconut milk. I'm gonna dip our balanje in the batter and then I'm gonna coat it with some breadcrumbs.
Okay, so we'll give this a taste and see what, what it's hitting for. I'll be honest, it's good. However, I could have gone with maybe a teaspoon or two less on the cook-up seasoning. It's not terribly salty, but it's, it's like on the, on the verge of getting there. All right, so maybe like a teaspoon or less of the cook-up seasoning would have just been absolutely perfect. All right, I'm gonna update the recipe and I'll make sure you guys have the real and right. I'm gonna make this over, make sure that you guys have the right, accurate recipe in the description below. The balanje, I love the fact that it's deep fried. It, I feel like it just makes me wanna eat more and more. The sauce really brings it all together. And then I got some filler leaves on top. If, that, if you guys were wondering what that was, 100% edible. We use it at the restaurant. And this is it, this is good. Okay, so I want to thank you guys, as always, for tuning in to this week's episode of Masses in the Making. Might not have been the cook-up you guys were expecting, but in my eyes, that's how I see this dish. Now, obviously, you could definitely try it with your different protein, with your chicken, with your, with your beef, with your lamb, however you want to try it. But I would like for maybe you to try it this way and just give me a feedback, leave a comment below so that I can interact with you guys. Let me know if you tried it, let me know what you think, if it's hitting, if it's not. And that's it. Next week's episode, you do not want to miss. It is the grand finale of the first season of Masters in the Making. And for that, I'm bringing on a very special guest. It's going, it's going off next week. You got to do a big in the season finale. So I hope to catch you guys there. Until next time, to God be all the glory. Stay blessed. Peace.